Good evening, everyone. I'm here today to talk to you about concussions, and I would like to start with a story about a young Canadian athlete named Rowan Stringer. Rowan was 17, and she played rugby for her high school in Ottawa, Ontario. On March 8, 2013, she took a hard tackle during a game. She admitted to experiencing fatigue and headaches as a result of this tackle, but she refused to tell anyone. Four days later, she passed away after returning to play and receiving another blow to the head. Now, concussion programs have been developed to help in situations such as these by educating key stakeholders about the injury and providing proper management practices. However, research shows that this is not enough. With Rowan, we see that despite what she knew about the injury, she didn't tell anyone. She did not engage in proper management behaviors. So, as a researcher and an athlete, I want to know whether other athletes would do the same. So my research used a sample of 175 varsity athletes at Trent University. My research identified conflicting responses on a survey assessing attitudes and intentions towards personal concussion risk. And what we found was shocking. 92% of athletes believe that protective equipment reduces risk, despite the fact that we know this is not the case. 65% of athletes reported feeling safer taking risks while wearing protective equipment. 90% of athletes admit that hiding concussion symptoms puts them at greater risk for further injury, yet 45% of athletes admitted that there are instances where they themselves would hide their concussion symptoms. So we looked at these conflicting responses and we wanted to know whether there are groups of athletes who respond this way. And our analysis revealed three response groupings, a proactive group, a reactive group, and an indifferent group. In the top bubble, we see the proactive group, who are athletes that report intent to engage in risk reduction behaviors, such as confronting aggressive opponents about the risks they pose to others. In the middle bubble, we see the reactive group, who only report intent to reduce risk by managing the injury after it occurs. And in the bottom bubble, we see the indifferent group of 49 athletes, accounting for over a quarter of our sample, who report little to no intent to engage in any risk reduction behaviors. We also found that group membership significantly differed based on one's history of concussion, where the majority of athletes in this indifferent group are athletes who had previously received a concussion. Athletes such as Ron Stringer. My research shows that concussion programs need to address these conflicting responses. Athletes need concussion programs to address these conflicting attitudes and intentions. Thank you.